I want to welcome you to another episode of Digging for the Truth. This is a special episode because we are talking about what's coming up in 2024. This is just going to be a quick teaching today, but it's going to be a very special and uh, I think important teaching for the season that we're in. And that is about Christmas and the miracle that it is and what Jesus did for us. And not only that, we're going to talk about what's coming in 2024 and how we can use your help. And we will be right back right after this. Welcome to another episode of Digging for the Truth. I am your host, Trent Taylor, and I'm going to start by asking you to do me a favor. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to the channel and also to help spread, uh, you know, just the news about the church at Bushland, uh, what we're doing um, out here, and also what we're doing in uh, uh, Digging for the Truth. We have a lot of things going on, and we need your help. Um, so this next year in 2024, we're going to talk about what we're doing, uh, what's coming up, and uh, I'm going to think, start with that to, to get you excited, and you can tell your friends about what we're going to be talking about and the topics we're going to be covering. So things that we're going to be covering are going to be all, all over the place, tearing down the high places. We're going to talk about the First World War, and I'm not talking about 1914 and the Germans. I'm talking about 3,300 years ago, the first war that actually took place. The uh, We're going to talk about Joshua and Caleb and the two giant kings, including King, Cog, uh, King Og of Bishan. We're going to talk about the Nephilim. We're going to talk about the giants pre-flood and antediluvian giants. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. In fact, the giants and the Nephilim and the Rephaim and the Akim, it's going to be actually probably three, four episodes because there's just so much to cover. We're going to talk about I'm hoping to bring on a special guest um, that actually is a, 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 an amazing Christian from Iran who has a unique perspective on the things going on in the world and why the United States is such an important place and how we can, you know, be thankful for where we live. We're also going to, I'm going to be bringing on Courtney Crowley uh, early on. In fact, that might be one of the first podcasts we do in 2024. And we're going to be talking about Israel and all the things going on there. That's just a taste of the things that uh, we've been researching and that are coming. Um, but today I wanted to share kind of a special teaching just for the season um, that we're in. It'll be just a quick teaching. And I want to begin with the scripture. And so we're going to go to Luke, beginning in chapter 2, uh, verse 8. And it says, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord. And that's, isn't that beautiful? The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign unto you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And actually, it's that right there that I want to talk about. I want to focus on is the swaddling of Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you where this whole thing is going because, uh, and then we're going to kind of break it down. I'm going to show you some things and then uh, we'll wrap up just real quick. But Jesus was, was wrapped in swaddling clothes. That scripture is only used three times in scripture, twice in Luke, and the other time is in Job. And so when we look at swaddling, well, what is swaddling? I'm going to go ahead and tell you the end, and then we'll kind of work our way through it. But that is that the, 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 depending on which text you look at, the priests or the shepherds in the flock. Okay, so when we look at Migdal uh, Eder. We're going to talk about uh, this location that is right there outside of, of Bethlehem and the, the tower of the flock. These flocks, okay, that were created, they were, they were created you now for, for sacrifice, for the pascal, uh, you know, the lamb, the sacrificial lambs. And so what they would do is they would choose a spotless, a spotless lamb, and then they would wrap that lamb in swaddling, okay, to prepare it and to keep it. To keep it from being damaged or bruised or, or tarnished or blemished in any way. Then they would take that lamb to sacrifice. So the symbolism is that Jesus, and think of this, he was born in a manger, Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit about what that is. Uh, he's born in a manger, so a crib or a stall. 
And then he was wrapped in waddling. So from the very moment, the symbolism of who Jesus is, what he did for us on that cross, that, or he was going to be doing for, for us on that cross, was from the moment he came into this earth that he was the sacrificial lamb. Let's look at, uh, let's look at, First Peter uh, chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but from the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish. Jesus was the sacrificial lamb. He paid the ultimate price so that we could have eternal life. He knew that we were incapable on our own, okay, of salvation, making, making a way to, to live a, a sinless life. And so he sacrificed himself. He became the sacrificial lamb. So a lot of times you'll hear people kind of, you know, so well, where is this swaddling in Scripture and so forth? Well, technically, the only place that we, we see swaddling at all in Scripture is in Luke 2 and in Job, ironically. And it's when Job, uh, sorry, Jesus, uh, God was revealing himself in Job 38, beginning in verse 8. Um, he was revealing the, um, um, his, you know, omnipotence uh, to Job. But when he says, it says, Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment in a thick darkness, its swaddling band. And so whenever we talk about this is when I fixed my limit for it, when I set bars and doors, when I said, this is uh, this far, uh, you may come, but no further. And here, your proud waves must stop. The firmament and the land and the seas, he harnessed, you know, so that swaddling band. So it's, again, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wrap, a strap, and it's harnessing something precious. What is that? We're talking about water in this particular case. So where did all of this, this, this come from? And then is there any context to the, you know, the, the truth of um, the, the meaning or the sim symbolic meaning of the swaddling? Well, actually, there's quite a bit. One of the, the, the Jewish texts that you can look to is, is the Mishnah, which was actually kind of just a compendium of uh, biblical, uh, sorry, bibl of, of uh, Jewish law. Um, and, and the thing is, is where everything gets a little bit fuzzy and people want to make a big deal about it is that that was not written until 200 AD. But we you have to keep in mind that many of these traditions had been kept in place um, for hundreds and hundreds of years. So by the time it was written down there, we're not going to look uh, directly and specifically only at uh, the mission, but we're going to look at some other things as well. But you have to understand that there were already practices in place. In fact, we see that even in scripture, uh, extra canonical writings. I mean, look at other historians like Josephus and so forth that apply, you know, history to the, you know, the, the validity and authority of, of, of Scripture. Um, but just kind of to wrap up, there's a really neat place that I want to, <laughs> you may have never heard of before, but it's called Migdal Eater. And uh, the image here I'm going to show you is it's kind of like what you would consider a suburb right outside of Bethlehem. Well, here's the interesting thing about this place. I want to show you an image. Well, actually, before I show you that image, um, it, it was translated. So Migdal Eater is Mig, Migdal Eater is translated the Tower of the Flock. So these were all these shepherds, okay, that were raising these sacrificial lambs. So we're going to go back to the original scripture, and we're going to close on that here in just a minute. Um, but think of this: they knew the significance and the importance of swaddling. They also knew the significance and importance of, of just of, of the sacrificial lamb. So when this is an interesting picture, this is actually taken. Um, this is actually uh, right there in Migdal Eater, the tower of the flock. Um, they would have, you know, this is just some remains and remnants of that area. This was taken around 1934. But sometimes when you have a historical reference and you can see something, it really brings it to life. So the shepherds knew a couple of things, including, obviously, what the definition of a manger is. If you look in Luke 13, 15, or Proverbs 14, 4, it basically, it often means a, a stall or a crib where animals were kept, like that of Migdal Eater. Okay, the sacrificial lambs were born to the Levitical shepherds, okay, in the tower of the flock, would wrap them in birthing clothes to protect their unblemished state, so that when uh, the amazed shepherds, when we see that in the Luke uh, 2 uh, transaction or, the, or interaction with the, uh, the angels and them seeing Jesus, they knew the significance of that. They hurried to see what the great wonder of the heavenly host proclaimed, arrived to gaze upon the baby in the place where the Passover lamb were born like a swaddled, you know, he, he was swaddled like a Passover lamb. So I'm going to go back to that scripture one more time Oops, not, not the image, the scripture. Okay, then so when we look at that, we see that the, and, and the, they spoke to the, the angel spoke to the shepherds. 
because they knew that they could have a great, they'd have a great appreciation. What a gift. What a gift, those shepherds. If you haven't seen uh, the nativity story, uh, there's this neat scene in there, and it talks, there's this, there's a shepherd, and he says, I believe that God gives all of us one gift, one gift. And he was speaking to Mary at the time, and Mary, he said, th- and he said, this is your gift. And so Mary in the, in the, in the movie asked, well, what is your gift? He goes, I haven't received it yet. And it was shortly after that, that uh, the angels revealed themselves, and he got to go and to see the gift that was Mary's was also his gift. It's beautiful. I just want to tell you, you know, Merry Christmas. And I pray that this Christmas season is the best one yet. And I want to give you a word of encouragement. I know we're going into 2024 and it looks kind of bleak and scary in election year. And who knows how many lockdowns are coming to keep people. (laughs) I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right? But I want to tell you this, that spotless lamb who sacrificed himself on the cross and, and God raised him three days later. He did that for you. He did that for me. Let me, 2024 may be crazy, but let me tell you what my, man, right now, I, I just speak the blessings of the Father, the so- sovereign creative, creator of the universe over you and your family in 2024. I believe that the world's going to be in chaos, but I believe his church is going to receive significant blessing. And the church is not just the walls that we go to and that we fellowship in. It is you. It is the body. It is the body of Christ. And if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are the church. Well, Thank you for tuning in for this quick episode. I just want to tell you, Merry Christmas. Appreciate everything you do. Tell your friends about this. Let's make 2024 the best year yet. Can't wait to see you on the next one.